Hello everybody and welcome to this GCSE chemistry question walkthrough for the atomic structure topic. What I'm going to do in this video is review some key stage 4 questions, I will kind of talk out loud and model my thinking and I'll write my thinking in blue next to the questions and I'll do some highlighting as well in yellow and then I will write the actual answers in the spaces in green. Of course, if you've not seen these questions before, you can always pause it at the beginning and then answer the questions yourselves and then watch my review of the question. So blue for thinking, green for answers. OK, this question is probably the easiest question. They get more difficult as we go through. And this question is about the carbon atom. And we've got a diagram of it here with protons and neutrons and electrons all labelled in their different key. What is the name for the central part of the atom? And we've got four words to pick from, and that is simply the nucleus. And the name of the particle with no charge, well, the particles have all got charges. The proton is positive, the neutron is no charge, and the electron is negatively charged. So the particle with no charge is the neutron. Just watch your spelling on that. With negative charge is the electron. And then that's the end of this, and that's one mark for each of those answers. And then the next part says, use the diagram to help you answer these questions. Draw a ring around the atomic brackets proton number for this atom. Now, the atomic number is the number of protons, and it's even got that clue in brackets. So we need to look up here for our black circles and count them up. And we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, which means the atomic or proton number is six. And incidentally as well, that's why there are six electrons too. Draw a ring around the mass number for this carbon atom. So the mass number is the number of protons added to the number of neutrons. And we've already counted that there were six protons and there are one, two, three, four, five, six neutrons as well. So six plus six equals our 12. We're told now that this part of the question is about a different atom of carbon, and this one has got six protons and it's got eight neutrons. Draw a ring around the symbol that represents this atom. Well, remember that protons is the atomic number, and so that means that it's going to be one of these two because they've both got atomic numbers of six, and it can't be that one because that would suggest that it's got eight protons when it's only got six. And then the next thinking is it's got eight neutrons and six protons added together. So six plus eight equals 14. And that is the relative atomic mass. And so that means it can't be the one on the left because it would only have an atomic mass of eight. And so it's got to be the middle one. The diagram below shows the bonding in a methane molecule. And we've got some circles with some dots and crosses and some capital letters for the symbols. The draw a ring around the chemical formula for the methane molecule. So there is one carbon and there are four hydrogen atoms. And so one carbon and four hydrogens, but when they're bonded together, we have a formula. And it's CH4 is the formula, and it's a little four down on the line. It's really subtle what's wrong with some of these. So that little four is up in the air. So that means that, that is wrong because the numbers should be subscript, not sort of up in the air like powers. And then the one on the right hand side is wrong because the little number belongs to the element that goes before. So that suggests that there are four carbon atoms and there aren't four carbon atoms. There's only one carbon atom. So we've got one carbon atom and four hydrogen. And so that's why the answer is the left hand one. And the numbers are nicely down on the line. Think about other things that you might know that are similar. O2, the phone company, and the formula for oxygen. It's a little two. CO2, it's a little two after the oxygen. H2O, little two after the hydrogen. Okay, the next question. What is the word that describes methane, compound, element, or mixture? So a compound is where you've got two or more elements that are different, and they are bonded together. And so actually, that is the answer. Element is when there's only one type of atom, and mixture is where there's two different substances, but they're not actually connected or bonded together. And so it's not that one. And last of all, draw a ring around the type of bonding in a methane molecule, covalent, ionic, and metallic. Well, more about this in a different video, but covalent happens between non-metals. Ionic is between a metal and a non-metal, and metallic is obviously 
only metals. And so since we've got carbon and hydrogen, which are both non-metals, that means it is covalent bonding. This next question is about two isotopes of hydrogen that are called hydrogen 1 and hydrogen 2. And the reason that they're called hydrogen 1 and hydrogen 2 refers to the mass number. So hydrogen 2 has got a mass number of 2 and hydrogen 1 has got a mass number of 1. And that's to do with how many things with mass there are in the nucleus of each of the two hydrogen atoms that are shown below. It says use correct words from the box to complete the sentences. The particles marked plus in the nucleus of atoms are called protons. The particles with no charge are called neutrons. And then we've got two molecules of water. So they've both got the symbol H2O, but the one on the left hand side has got this slightly heavier hydrogen with a relative atomic mass of two. And the one on the right has got two atoms of hydrogen with the relative atomic mass of one. And the question says molecule A is heavier than, lighter than, or the same mass as molecule B. Well, because it's got two atoms of heavy hydrogen, it will be heavier than molecule B. And so the answer is going to be something along the lines of hydrogen 2 is heavier than hydrogen 1, or the hydrogen atoms are heavier, or hydrogens in molecule A have got a larger nuclear mass. Any of those three things are absolutely fine, but you only need to say one of the explanation points because the overall mark is only two and you get one mark for the first bit and one mark for your explanation. This question is about the eight elements in the second row, so lithium to neon in the periodic table, and we've got an atom shown with two energy levels or two shells, and we've been commanded in this first question to show the electronic structure of the boron atom. Now boron has got the symbol B and the atomic number of five or the proton number of five. So that means we need to therefore recognize that there are therefore five electrons as well as there being five protons. So atomic number five, five protons, five electrons. And so we have to put them into the shells. The first shell holds two and then it is full. And then we have to put three more in the second shell. Even though I like to put them in that arrangement in terms of the compass points, you can actually put them anywhere within the shell, provided there is two in the first shell and three in the next. The central part labeled Z is the nucleus. And then name the subatomic particles in part Z of the boron atom. So hopefully the earlier questions have helped you with this. There is the proton and there is the neutron. And those are the two particles in the nucleus. And then it says give the relative charges. So we've named the particles. And then it says give the relative charges of these subatomic particles. So you only get one mark for the two names and then you get two marks for the charges. So the proton is positive or you can write plus one and the neutron is zero or you could write neutral instead. And so this time you actually get one mark for each of those, one mark for the plus one and one mark for the zero or neutral. And then the electronic structure of neon is shown in figure 10 and it's not correct. And so neon has got this as its atomic number. And so that means it's got 10 protons and therefore it's got 10 electrons. And hopefully you can spot down here that there are three marks for this. So we need to give either three separate points or some development to our answers. So actually it's three separate points in a way. So first of all, neon has been shown to only have 10 electrons. It's got eight in the first shell and it's got one in the next. So neon is not shown to have 10 electrons, it's shown to only have nine. So neon needs 10 electrons, not nine. I'll put that in brackets because that's not vital. And then the next thing is, well, neon's got eight electrons in the first shell and the first shell holds two electrons. And so then it's full. And then the second shell needs more electrons. It needs 10 electrons in total. And so in terms of how this mark breaks down, you'll get one mark for recognising that neon has been shown with an electron missing. You don't have to use my exact words, by the way. You could say it's got um, one electron missing. 
and you could say that it's got 10 electrons, not 9, etc. You get one mark for saying that the first shell actually holds only two electrons, but you could instead say there are too many electrons in the first shell. And last of all, we're saying that there's too few electrons in the second shell. So there should be eight in the second shell instead of, in this case, only one being shown in the second shell. This next question shows three isotopes of potassium. So these are isotopes. But the first part of the question doesn't ask you about the word isotope. It says, in what way does the atomic structure show the, that these are all atoms? And so we need to look at the protons and neutrons and electrons for each of these three atoms. And so if we consider first the protons, positive, there are 19 positives in each of the atoms. And so that's a similarity. If we then move on to look at the neutrons, and for neutrons it's different every time. There's 20 for the element on the left, 20 for the element in the middle, and 22 for the element on the right. And then in terms of electrons, this is a bit of a pain, but if you count them in one, you can get it in all of them because it's the same every time. And in fact, I will just tell you that the electron arrangement is 2, 8, 8, 1 for each of them. So in other words, 2 in the first shell, 8 in the next shell, 8 in the next shell, and 1 in the outer shell. And that's the same for all of them. And this all adds up to 19 electrons. And so that's the answer to the first question. In what way does this show that they are atoms? Well, that's because that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. And so that's actually all that you need to say. The number of protons equals the number of electrons. So you could say, if you want to use more words, number of protons equals the number of electrons. Next part, why are these three called isotopes? of potassium. Well, first of all, they're isotopes of potassium because they all are the same element and they're all the same element because they are all potassium. So that's one reason why they're called isotopes of potassium. Next point is they all have the same number of protons or you could say the same uh, atomic number instead. Or you could be very specific and say that they all have 19 protons. You could, if you're going to use the numbers, make sure you get it right, though. And then they're isotopes, though, because you need to say in what way they are different. They're isotopes because they have different numbers of neutrons. And again, if you are going to use the numbers themselves, make sure you get those right. Or you could say that they've got different relative atomic mass or mass number. So they're actually the same element with the same number of protons, but a different number of neutrons. This question focuses on the electronic structure of different elements and what significance that has in terms of its reactivity. And so these are the electronic structures of three different elements. They are 281 for the element on the left, 288 for the element B, and 2881 for element C. And then it says identify elements A and B. And so element A has got the electron arrangement 281. And that means it's got one electron in its outer shell, and so it's in group one, and it's got three occupied shells, which means it's in period three. And so then it's just a case of looking up in your periodic table which element is in period three, group one, and that is the element sodium. Now it says identify, so you could write the name or you could write the symbol Na. I would always advise you to write the name in case you get the symbol wrong. Then element B, by the same logic, it has also got three occupied shells because there are three numbers for the electron structure. So it's in period three, but it's in group eight because there is an eight in the outermost shell, group eight or group zero. And so that makes element B argon or AR as its symbol. Now there's two marks for that, one mark for each of them. Why is element C more reactive than element A? And that is purely down to the electronic structure. So 2881 as opposed to 281. And so for here, we're looking at the idea that the elements that are in group one, they lose their electrons. And so if an element is larger, and so these have got more shells that are occupied, that means the outer electron that is being lost is further away from the nucleus. Or you could say it is more shielded from the nucleus as attraction. And so as a result, it is lost more easily. And that's what you need to say for those two marks. You'd get one mark for each of those points 
and you don't need to say one to get the second mark. And so moving on to the final question, why is element B unreactive? Element B has got the electron arrangement 2, 8, 8. And what that means is that element B, or argon, you can use its name, by the way, since we know what it is, has got an outer shell that is full, or it's got eight electrons in its outer shell. And so as a result, it doesn't need to lose or gain electrons. It's got a stable electron configuration. We can't have it just stable by itself, but it's got a stable electron arrangement, and so it won't lose or gain electrons. Remember, my writing in blue is the thinking, and the writing in green is what's going to get you the marks. OK, that's the end of this question review. I hope it was useful. I'll be back again with another one soon. We'll be doing bonding, and then we'll move on to others, and I'll see you then.